sisi kazi kila ndo kazi na pigambi kwenye kisima tuunde sipanuki sipanuki pale Yesu ni rafiki wa damani ulielemewa na mizigo ataifanya kuwa nyepesi fanya mwenyewe wa muzi leo Kambi kwenye kisima Tuhude Waliona kiu waje wanye Majitamu na enye uzima Ya tole wanakuwe kwa uru Joni mne Harakisha usikate tama Venu kwenye kisima chabana Uje upate kopola maji wewe Tuhude Waliona kiu waje wange Makitamu na enye uzima Ya tole wanakuwe kwa uru Doni mge Harakisha usikate tama Venu penye kisima cha wana Uje upate kopola maji wewe Doho unye Waliona kiu waje wange Majitamu na enye uzima Ya tole wanakuwe kwa uru Doni mge Harakisha usikate tama Venyu kwenye kisima cha wana Uje upate kopola maji wewe Doho mge I want us to this evening if you've allowed your Bibles to accompany you to church this evening, to look into the book of Acts chapter 19, it is a, a, a chapter that is close to my heart, Acts chapter 19. I would like us, at least for this evening, begin with verse 11 and we'll end probably at verse, verse 20 or 19. It is just a, a passage, a narrative that is shared, Acts chapter 19. I'd like us to read it reads as follows, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even the handkerchiefs or aprons brought from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Some of the Jewish, I, some of the Jewish exorcists took upon themselves to call on the name of of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. There were the seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest who did so. The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was, was leaped on them overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to both all Jews, Greeks, dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord was magnified. And men who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and bent them in the sight of all, and they were counted to the value, a total of 15,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and it prevailed. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Talk to us and reveal yourself. In Jesus we pray. Amen. We are looking into the book of Acts. The first night when we came here, we, we said the book of Acts is written by Dr. Luke. And the, the book of Luke and the book of Acts is written by one author with an intention of presenting Jesus to an unknown man called Theophilus. The only thing that we, we, we know about Theophilus is that when you break the word Theophilus, Theophilus means the lover of the truth. So the one that Luke was writing to is a man lo that loved the truth and loved the Lord. Now, let me also be able and say to all of us that the book of Acts starts over or it picks up where Luke 
when Luke concluded, Luke concluded with the resurrection of Jesus and, and, and in the book of Luke and Acts introduces itself with the ascension of Jesus. Now, the, the book of Acts, if we were to conclude it, or if we were to summarize the book of Acts, is that the book of Acts records what is called a positional change in the Godhead. When in the Godhead, when, man, when, when the Word became flesh, it dwelt amongst men, but it was cumbered with humanity. It could not be everywhere at the same time, but when the Word that became flesh was taken up to heaven, when he was seen losing gravity, taken up to heaven, there was a positional change. As he went up, someone descended, and the one that descended is the Holy Spirit. He can be in the same place at the same time without being limited by anything. Many Bible students say that the book of Acts, it is the Acts of the Apostles. But allow me to conclude and say to all of us this evening, the book of Acts is not the Acts of the Apostles, but it is the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. The Apostles cannot work and do anything by themselves unless they are moved by the Spirit. So the book of Acts is, a, is an interesting book that it is the only book that begins with a conclusion of the matter. The book of Acts summarizes what we call the eschatological hope because as it goes up, two messengers come that the one whom you have seen going up one day will come in the same manner that you have seen him going up. Hence they come and say, this same Jesus... Which Jesus, the one who opened the eyes of the blind, the one who raised the dead, will come back in the same way you saw him go. Now, we get into chapter 19. The Bible says God performed extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so much that even handkerchiefs from Paul will heal the sick. Remember, even Peter when people will step in his shadow, people will, be, people will be saved and people will be healed. But this evening, allow me to say to you, there are two souls in the Bible. There are two souls in the Bible, or there are two men who are called by the name of Saul. We've got the Saul of the Old Testament and the Saul of the New Testament. The Saul of the Old Testament was the first king in Israel, and the Saul of the New Testament was the first systematic theologian of the church. The Saul of the Old Testament was a tall man. The Bible says he stood head and shoulders above every other guy, but the Saul of the New Testament was a small man. The soul of the Old Testament was a handsome guy that the ladies in Israel made songs about him. But the soul of the New Testament was an ugly man with a nose veered to the left. The soul of the Old Testament died with an old name. But the soul of the New Testament died with a new name. When people were looking for Saul, they could not find Saul because Saul was immense in God and God was immense in Saul and he became the man we call Paul. The soul of the Old Testament had a spiritual fall, but the soul of the New Testament had a spiritual rising up. Hence it says that when you look at me, the old man has died and the new man lives. The soul of the Old Testament is an old man who had a demonic spirit that was calmed by the songs of David. But the soul of the New Testament was a man that sat down when he wrote on paper, he mesmerized all the cities. Remember, when he spoke to the city of Ephesus, he says we fight not against flesh and blood but we fight against principalities and powers in the darkness of this world. You remember when he wrote to the church at Colossae, he says that he is the image of the invincible God. When he writes to a church of Rome, he says who shall separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? Shall tribulation, shall life or death? Then he says, I am persuaded that in Christ Jesus we are more than conquerors. It is the soul of the New Testament who rises says, let me tell you a mystery. We shall not all die, but in a twinkle of an eye we shall be changed. The Bible says God performed miracles by the hands of Paul. Now the Bible says who shall ascend 
to the holy mountain of God is man with a clean heart and clean hands. You remember Uzzah, the man who touched the Ark of the Covenant. He died. The intentions were right, but the heart and the hands were wrong. You can do the work of the Lord. The intentions might be right, but the condition of the heart might be wrong. The Bible says, these guys, they were the seven sons of Sceva. They went through Sabbath school, but Sabbath school did not go through them. The, 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 the Bible says, they were, they were the sons of a Jewish priest. They were PKs. They grew up in the church, but they did not know the God of the church. The Bible says, they saw Paul doing extraordinary miracles and they wanted to be like Paul. I am here to tell you this evening, be careful what you wish for. There are people who are in the ministry who are not called, but they simply joined those who are called. There, there, there are certain people who have accepted a call, but they were never called. They simply accepted a missed call. They are in the ministry, but they don't know the Jesus of the ministry. They are so pompous. One of the signs that a man is not called by God is when he thinks he's bigger than everyone. You see, I, 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 a story is told of a, a man that fell in town and collapsed in town and everyone was around him and th there is a man that came and said to everyone, I am a paramedic, please stand aside, I am taught, uh, I know first aid and everyone moved and one old man stood up and said, when there is a time, when you reach the point that says call a doctor, please call me and the man, and the man stu stood aside. That teaches us a lesson that the pastor said, preacher said, be humble. Because there are people who are far much better than you. The greatest preacher is yet to be born. The greatest preacher is Jesus. The church can do without you. There are people who think that the church cannot do without them. But I'm here to disappoint you that the church cannot, can do without you. The church does not need you. The church will even exist after you are dead. There are certain people, when they get angry at God, they say, because we are not happy, we are going to hold the tithes and offering. I'm here to disappoint you to tell you this evening, God can do without your tithe. The Bible says, the Jewish sons of Sceva, they called on, on those who had the demons, and they prayed on them. Now listen to how they pray. They say, we, we cast you out. In the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, there is a mistake there. They don't believe in Jesus for themselves. But they are praying in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. I am here to tell you that if your mother and your father is a believer, they can only save themselves without you. In a certain place, a young boy was known to throw stones. He, he really liked throwing stones. One day he threw a stone and the stone hit the tree that had apples and the apple fell down. He took the apple, he looked left, he looked right, he saw no one saw him. He went to the tree and he tied the apple to the branch of the tree. When people started looking close, instead of the apple to grow, the apple began to die. When they looked closely, they discovered that the apple is not connected to the branch, but the apple is tied to the branch. We are having Christians in these days who are not connected to Jesus, but they are tied in the name of Jesus. There are people who are not connected to Jesus, but they are tied to the name of the church. Jesus... The demons answer because demons have a tendency of answering. The demons answer and says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Allow me to get into the New Testament class for a few moments. When the demon says, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. They don't use the same word. When the demon says, Jesus, I know. They use the word ginosko. 
I know Jesus by experience and encounter. The demons are saying to these guys, we are better than you because we've got an experience with Jesus. We have had an encounter with Jesus. He defeated us in heaven. Therefore, you are no match for us. When the demon says, Paul, I know, it does not use the word ginosko. It uses the word epistomai. I know Paul by close proximity and observation. When you think that you are in a mugalo alone, no one sees you. There is an eye that sees you. We've got an unseen attendance that is there that we are not even aware that it is there. Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. The Bible says they were given a thorough beating that they left out with a birthday suit running around town naked and bleeding. I remember when I was in Zimbabwe in a certain year, we were preaching in a place in a, in, in, a, in, in a place called Kwekwe, a certain lady falls down. Now, elders are somehow, elders, they can do things without pastors. But when magic happens, they remember that they are pastors in their midst. <clears throat> so we were called, and I also went young as I was. I was excited to go there. And the lady started manifesting when they were singing the demon will start the song for them. I like number eight in the hymnals. And the demon will start the song. And they prayed for the demon. We also prayed. When the lady keeps quiet, we thought the demon had gone. And the demon will say, no, pastors, we are still here. <laughs> Up until an old, an old minister came. And when the old minister prayed, the demon asked, where do you want me to go? And the pastor said, come to me. The demon said, I am afraid. And I knew immediately that I will never say, come to me. I kept quiet. <laughs> I kept quiet. But one old man made a mistake, an elder, said, come to me. And this thing said, we are coming right now. The old man stood up and ran away. Now, I want you to know this, that the power was not with the old pastor. But the power was within the connection he had with Jesus. Allow me to get to history. Then we close this. Napoleon at some point was a powerful man. He sat down with his generals and said, How can... Actually, Napoleon was an enemy of England. England called on young guys, intelligent guys, and said, How can we defeat Napoleon? They called young men, educated them with the culture of France. They were taught the songs of France. They were taught the language of France and the mannerism of France. The intention was to confuse France. After three years, these guys graduated and they were given a uniform that looked like that of France. And they were marching towards France. And Napoleon was sitting in Paris with some of his advisors and commander. And one commander says to Napoleon, Napoleon, your armies are coming. Napoleon stands up. He looks. He looks. He is quiet. He hears the songs. He sees the flags. And Napoleon answers. He says, the flags are of France. The sounds of the trumpet is of France. The uniform is that of France, but the marching is of England. We are having people in the last days. The songs are of Zion. The sermons are of Zion, but the lifestyle is Babylon. We are having people sitting here every Sabbath. They sing, my hope is built on nothing less, but we do not know that in the darkness they are the friends of the devil. I'm here to tell you that in this great controversy, God cannot take neutrality. It's either you are for God or you are not for God. Let me talk to pastors to be. Pastors to be. I will tell the pastors that being a pastor, it is the only job in the whole world that pays you to be holy. Pastors are paid to be holy. You can have all your degrees, but if you do not have 
ethics and character, all that we should preach is useless. I remember one of my lecturers giving us an example at school. He says, being a pastor, he says, being a pastor, I'm still talking to pastors. Pastor, please listen to me. I am here to talk to a pastor. He says, that man says, being a pastor is like a man who plays and makes a living by playing a guitar. And it happens that that man gets an accident and he loses his fingers. You would want to play the guitar, but you can't because your fingers are gone. When you are a pastor and morality cannot speak for you, People are saying he is a great preacher, but he, he, he goes to school, but he is a theologian, but he is the champion of Mungalo. I'm here to tell someone this evening that God is looking for men. God is looking for who? God is looking for men. Baraton is not in need of beautiful ladies. There are many of them. Baraton is not in need of handsome young men. There are many of them. But Baraton is in need of men and women of God. Pastor, I'm still talking to you. After you have preached, after you have preached, and when these girls are in their domes alone, what is the subject of discourse? Can they say he is a man of God? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. When there is a meeting of demons in hell and your name comes up, can the demon say, this is a man of God? The demon spoke and said, the Paul they know. But if the name of Sia comes, <laughs> can the demon say, there comes a man of God. Let me talk to young ladies, then I finish. The value of a young lady is not how you look in the mirror. The value of a young lady is not how you look in the mirror. You see, if you allow these boys to play with you, they are not going to marry you. Should I repeat it? They are not going to marry you. After they are done, they would look for newcomers, fresh men that are coming. So I challenge you to say, take care of yourself. The Bible says, beauty is deceitful and the charm is in vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Now, the Bible, as I close, I'm closing it this way. The Bible says, when they were beaten and embarrassed, it became known at Ephesus. Those who practiced magic went and brought their books in public and they bent them in public. I want to make an unpopular call this evening. If you know that you have been playing church and you are sitting here and if you know that you've got things that don't belong to you, when your mother sent you to school, when your parents sent you to school, they sent you trusting you. But when you look at yourself, you see that you are not what you were supposed to be. If there is a young man here that has been known as a champion of Mungalo, Tonight, I want you to come forward as I pray with you to leave all those things in the presence of Jesus. Shh, I'm not laughing. I'm not, it's not, uh, hello, hello, hello. It's, it's, it's not a funny issue. I'm not joking, I'm serious. 
I'm serious. If you know that you are not what you were when you came here, I challenge you to come and bring it to Jesus. Some of you here sitting here, they've got things that they got from their parents that are not theirs. If I can say to some of you, lift up your shirts, you will be shocked to find wires that you are connected technological, African technology. If you are here and you've got things that do not belong to you, tonight I ask you to leave them at the feet of Jesus. Some who are sitting here are addicts to say their things. Ellen White says in the book Christ, in the book Character and Personality, it says that thing, that habit, if you do not leave it, each and every day as you continue the grip becomes tighter and tighter that you need the blood of Jesus to deliver you if you are sitting here you are struggling with things and your Christianity allows you to wear a suit and you come to church and you look good but you know that you are far away from Christ Paul says they've got the form of godliness but they ever deny the power thereof if you have a form of godliness but not a true godliness Come and bring it to Jesus. Allow me to be an Adventist preacher. She says, when she writes in the, in the book, Selected Messages, book two, she says that unless the character of Christ is rightly reproduced in his people, yeah. then the end shall come. God is not looking for preachers. The devil is greater preacher. The devil had a crusade in heaven and one third of angels were, were converted. Your preaching is nothing compared to what the devil can do. If you think that your singing will save you, the devil can sing a quartet by himself. This church is not in need of singers. It is in need of men and women of God. If you come to this place seeking for Jesus, chances are, if you come with your habits and stay for three years at Paraton and graduate, you will graduate worse than the devil himself. If you don't leave it here, this night, tonight, I'm happy to tell you, I don't know your sins. I'm going back home. I don't want to know them, but I know a Jesus. A Jesus that has power to deliver you. That has power to deliver you completely from all addictions that you can have. A story is told of a man in Zimbabwe. He wanted to get into the Guinness Book of Records. He asked people to hold a rope from the other end of Zimbabwe and others hold it from the other end of Zambia because Zimbabwe is divided by the Victoria Falls. And this man said he will walk in the rope. He walked in the rope as he's walking. When he got into the center of the rope, the wind started to blow. And people closed their eyes. This guy balanced and balanced. Then later... When he had made it, he says, this time, I want to do it differently. I want to do it carrying someone on my back. And he carried the friend on his back. And the friend got on his back as he was walking in the rope. When they were in the center, the wind started to blow. Instead of the one walking to balance, the one on the back started balancing. And this guy says to him, my friend, listen to this. Your fate depends on me walking on the rope because if you try to balance we are all going to fall in this great controversy we don't need to fight our battles let us allow Jesus to carry us when we allow him to carry us we see there is no need for us to walk alone when Jesus is here I remember when I was in Soweto electricity would go it becomes dark i don't have brothers i always had sisters as i was sit, sitting one day i wanted to go to the toilet and i was pressed and the toilet was outside i asked my sister can you please go with me my sister said no i don't want to go to the bathroom i asked another one can you please help me she said no i don't want to go to the bathroom and i went to my grandfather my grandfather said to me go i am watching you when my grandfather said, go, I am watching you. I went with confidence through the dark. But later as I grow up, I discovered that at times, the old man was not even watching me. I was walking alone. But because he said, go, 
His promises were enough for me to go for myself. I am telling you this evening that there is a Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible. His promises are true. When you come and leave it to Jesus, he can do for you what you can never do for yourself. I'm here to tell you that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus has a speciality of dealing with hard sinners and to give them a new name. It's a difficult call. People are looking at you, it's fine. We are here for Jesus. If you are not what you are supposed to be and you came here and you notice that something is not going right, there is a chance for you tonight to bring all those to Jesus. I, I, I tell you, tonight is Wednesday. Few days are left for us to close and we go home. Why would you allow yourself to continue suffering from the same sin if there is a Jesus who can deliver? Makes no sense. I invite you to come to Jesus and give him a chance in your life. I still want to talk to pastors. I still want to talk to pastors. The success of your ministry is not dependent on your sermon. The success of your ministry is dependent on how you walk with Jesus. If you want to minister and you still have those small sins that you are still lingering with or sins that you are still romancing, there is a problem with you. The pastor will pray for us. I'll give you a chance to come to Jesus if you've got things to live at the feet of Jesus tonight. It is your chance that you do so. There is a song that says, We have heard a joyful sound that Jesus saves. Our dear Heavenly Father, you have spoken and we have heard. The whole church today we are gathering at the foot of the cross. We pray for grace and ability to lay down on the foot of the cross every sin, every habit, every way of life that will deny us eternal life. We want to thank you for everyone who has taken a bold step to come forward. Baptize them first with your Holy Spirit. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we shall all be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. We pray that we will exemplify Jesus Christ. Your children have come burdened and pained by the way of life that the devil has led them astray. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, for forgiveness. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you will save us from guilt and the power of sin. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that today will be a day of regeneration. We pray that today will be a day when your children will experience the newness of life. As we prepare many others for baptism, the last one this calendar year, the last one this semester, this coming Jesus. Sabbath, we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we write their names here on earth, may their names be written in heaven. May the Holy Spirit do what we have been unable to do for many days, many weeks, many months, and many years. May the promises we made to our parents and our pastors back at home that we have been unable to keep, may the Holy Spirit enable us from today. So into your hands we commit ourselves. Forgive our sins. Bless us. Provide for us. Answer our prayers. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.